times if you're watching this as a chiropractor, how many times have we had someone that we got out of crutches, out of a wheelchair, miracles, and dropped out of care? It happens all the time. So results are not enough. So in 2024, in the economy that we find ourselves in, what would be your advice on how to grow and how to thrive in chiropractic? Yeah, I think um, there is two economies that go on. First of all, there is the, the, the there's our own personal economy, and then there's the the economy at large. Um, for most, uh, where we can, mostly we like to ignore the economy at large and work on our own personal economy. So when someone normally asks me that, I'd be like, "Look, man, I'd say raising interest rates are probably the first." Uh, and most people my age, by the way, have lived a very, very, very sheltered life. They've almost never lived through inflation. This is the first, anyone, anyone 40 years old, a little bit older than that, maybe has a little bit, but there's a huge, if you think about how many people are in that workforce, anyone under 40 really hasn't really ever experienced any uh, depression, uh, financial depression, inflation is the first time they experienced inflation. Um, etc. So uh, and they had the 2008 crash and some of that stuff. Um, I, all I can tell you is that every single business I've ever been, been involved in, including uh, bricks and mortar, chiropractic businesses, consulting and agency business, grew during economic crises. So, so there's a couple of things. I think that's got a lot to do with the industry. I mean, being in in chiropractic and in consulting and help, it's the same industry really. Through economic difficulties at large. Um, people need more help. So, so I, we have no, we know. So, I mean, if you had to be a fly on the wall across my inner circle group post COVID, you've never seen so many records in your life. It was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Why? Because in that economic crisis, we had this like pent up demand of, for lack of a better way of describing it human interaction and people being touched you know one of our guest speakers at our masterminds was sarah willingham who is on dragon's den um and we had an a excellent discussion with her and she counterintuitive intuitively she opened up um or went and acquired as many bars and um like it's called NICAP a business and you can check it it's excellent and I think that's 70 80 million within a short period of time and counterintuitively because there's a couple of things happen in the market whenever there is a, a, a downturn in the market there's always an opportunity so for example rentals uh, were very favorable for her to go pick up some really good rentals and the other thing which is there's this unbelievable pent-up demand human beings are, are, are social by nature mm. which is chiropractic is just this unbelievable we have this unbelievable blessing in a time of AI and all that conversation where we will never be replaced. There, nothing could ever replace uh, people. There's a craving in human uh, and a human being to be touched. And we play in this beautiful realm with this metaphysical, whatever you want to call it, where it's like there's something magical about that interaction of someone jumping on your table during a stressful day and a hard time and they're going to need that. And then without them even understanding it, like, you know, why do people engage in exercise sometimes not even fully understanding why is because there's an endorphin rush and they feel better than they did when they didn't do it. And there's a real thing called runner's high. And, and, um, and uh, I mean, I don't, I don't eat breakfast. So I have a green juice every single morning. So essentially intermittent fasting. And if I actually, when I break it down, it's like, I just feel excellent when I do it. And just intuitively, you'll see people being gravitating in times of stress towards things like chiropractic that boost endorphins, that boost immune system, that boost health, that are are, are less down a, a negative path. So that's the first thing. You've got nothing to worry about. You're perfectly well placed. Every business I've ever, ever, ever owned has only, has only done excellent things during economic crises. The next thing I'd say is that doesn't mean that there aren't certain things that we have to acknowledge. If I had to give you some predictions, one, I think, I think quality of lead could be affected, uh, or cost per lead could could be affected. I definitely think there's going to be more because there's going to be more shopping around. So typically with with these times, that that means that you can't play the game. That that means even more that you need to be aware of your pricing strategy. That means even more that you need to be aware that having like things like your pricing on your website is negatively affecting you. Because if the marketplace is shopping around a little bit more, 
and you're in the marketplace, whether you like it or not, we understand the whole thing of your personal economy has got very little to do with the external economy, how you think about it. But the fact is, you still have to understand that you're in the game. So you'd be um, you'd be very naive not to understand that, for example, in a time where people are shopping around more, if you still insist of having your prices on your website, then you cannot cry when people when you are the victim of people shopping around. Let me give you an example. There is nothing good that can possibly come from having a price on your website. And I know someone's watching this now and they're like, why? Here's yeah, only one of two things that can possibly happen. There is a group of people that are going to be choosing to use you because you are reassuringly expensive. So let's say the price on your website are reassuringly expensive. Specifically, director drivers, uh, slightly more financial pe- uh, financially well-off people, uh, or let's call them the affluent. If we want to talk about the psychology of marketing to the affluent, they like to spend on things that are reassuringly expensive. So let me give you an example because most people have this experience, right? So you Google some, or you go on Amazon and you search for something. Let's call it a pen or standard thing for the office. And there's like 27 different options there. And Amazon normally gives you, um, you know, the the preferred option or the most popular option, etc., or the cheapest option. You almost never go for the cheapest option. You look at the cheapest option, you go, I'm going to go one of other cheapest option because you're like, well, that must, it, it must be poor quality. So, so, so that also happens if you have cheap pro- if you're the cheapest in the area i think especially with healthcare because <clears throat> you're in charge of looking after their most valuable asset which is their health i know if i was in in the in the market for a parachute i wouldn't be going for the cheapest parachute dude who wants to go to the cheapest dentist mm. freaking nobody so like if you're the cheapest in the area you should be freaking out and you should get that stuff off your website as quickly as possible because there's a group of people they're going to choose you because you're the cheapest do you really want to work with them? Firstly. Secondly, there's going to be a group of people that will specifically choose you, not choose you, Avoid you yeah. because you're the cheapest. Like the Amazon thing. You're like, there's no freaking way I'm seeing that guy. He's the cheapest. And you think that having the cheapest price, and uh, uh, this is what every chiropractor does. Hey, doc, what should my price be? I've looked at other docs and they're all charging this. It's irrelevant what other docs are charging. My advice for you is this. If you really insist of having a web, if you do really insist of having your prices on your website, then by, by country mile, you need to be just about the most expensive. That's, that's, it's essential, mm. okay? Um, if you look at most marketplaces, they're very polarized. You cannot be, you, okay, you don't want to be, you, you either go for, if you look at the gym, gym industry, that marketplace is very polarized. You're either the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest. They have options. There's no saunas. There's no sh- there's showers, but no saunas, no pools, no steam rooms. There is basically no staff. It's 24 hours. It's a turnstile. Very popular in London. Pure gym, things like that. They've polarized the market. They've come in at like 20, 20 pounds a month type thing. Okay. And then you have your gyms that sit in the middle, which are not either. They're not low cost and they're not high end right? They kind of cater for everyone. And then you have your gyms high end, which are like 100, 150 pounds a month. The gyms that are going under are the ones that are in the middle. Mm. So the ones that are not polarizing the market, they're not like, I, I'm going for you for the cheapest, or I'm going for the most expensive, but the ones that are like 45 pounds a month or something like that, those are the ones that are really struggling because they're not anything to anyone. So if you're going to put your prices on your website, at least be, don't be in the middle. Mm. I'm going to say there's no benefit for you putting your prices on your website if you're a chiropractor. Because what I rather want, I don't want to play into the, I don't want to be a glorified version of a chiropractic Amazon where they're going, who, which I'm going to use. I'm going to search this. I'm going to search who's the most, who's the cheapest. I want them to come to your website and all it says there is cost inquiry. So the price, I'm like, wow, like no, no price. No, if you, want to, if you want to find out how much it costs, click on a button, put your details in here, and then guess what? We have their details. And then we can have a human-to-human conversation to go, it depends. Tell me what's going on. Oh, wow, someone asked me what's going on on the phone. And all they did was for ask about a cost inquiry. Someone watching this right now is thinking this doesn't work. Listen, man, I, have, I we are one of the largest consulting coaching groups on the planet. I ran eight offices myself. I can tell you without any doubt, and you can speak to my marketing managers, any it's unbelievable how many people fill out that cost inquiry every single day, every single month. Mm. It's unbelievable. 
And here's what else you're going to be thinking if you're watching this. You, could, you may be thinking, I would never do that. And guess what? I would never do that. But that's not, you're not the customer. Mm. The fact is that people do it all the freaking time, is they put costs in quote. Do you know how many people, I, do you know how people have messaged me about this one tip? It's like, Doc, I can't believe how many people are filling out the cost inquiry on the website. I took my prices on my website. But I just want you, I just anyone watching this right now, that the first thing is how to succeed in 2024. Be acutely aware of the marketplace and 2024 election year, wherever you are in the world, but United Kingdom or, or, or the US, it's going to be carnage, mm. right? Carnage. So so be aware of that too. People might be hold, might be, it's not that people, in the va- in the absence of value, price is the only consideration. So it's not that people spend less. It's that you need to just be a little bit better at being aware of the psychology around getting some a customer to part with their money. If the pain, the pain of doing something, i.e. giving you money, paying something per credit card, taking cash and giving it to you, has to be, the pain of doing nothing has to be more than the pain of doing, pain of doing something. If they're going, oh, it's kind of touch and go, it's quite painful to give across $2,000, um, and I think I can live with this pain, you're not going to make the sale or the conversion or whatever you want to call it. So your the psychology of of sales, sales psychology, persuasion, I would read Robert Cialdini's book, persuasion. I think that's incredibly important right now. I think um, your front desk knowing that when people phone, uh, that it requires... It requires more of everything. It requires more intellectual awareness. Uh, people are watching their, their their dollars at the moment, so the front desk needs to ask more questions. Be to me, needs to be more empathetic. Needs to say things like, uh, "What do you sh- just so I make sure you're with the right person?" Um, I want to. Uh, what are you struggling with? And then the person's going to talk, and then there's rapport building. And then when they say this on the phone, they say, "That's also uh, so you have side care. Great. I'm going to put you with uh, Dr. Ben. He specialises in that." statistics have shown conversions go up based on that so you did nothing really but have a conversation you never you never got personally as a chiropractor you never got better at selling you never but as a team you got better at the intellectual awareness that the marketplace is a bit fearful of spending right now so as a team you have to come to the party and it kind of segues nicely into referrals so one is pricing the next is when when times get tough you go deeper on your existing customers Mm. And that kind of also means you you work harder to get referrals and you work harder to keep customers. How do you work harder to get referrals and how do you keep customers? Because the most expensive way to grow to grow to grow business is to get brand, brand, brand new deal flow or business. The best way to grow a business is to go is to have longer relationships with customers and and serve them longer and also generate more referrals. Those two things People think happen uh, as a happenstance, if you will. But that is the biggest mistake that you can make in business is, is, is you think the word entitlement comes through. Uh, one of my teachers always taught me that whenever the, the, the theme of entitlement comes into any of those two, you're in big trouble. Entitlement from this perspective. One, I helped Mary get out of a wheelchair surely she's going to listen to my recommendations slash come for regular care because look what the alternative is wrong wrong that is you assuming that that is that is a that is a wrong assumption and how many times are you watching this as a chiropractor how many times have we had someone that we got out of crutches out of a wheelchair miracles and dropped out of care it happens all the time so results are not enough results are not enough write that down <laughs> results are not enough there is no ways that you can, so that entitlement of I've done this for the customer, well, you haven't done anything for the customer, you haven't done them a favor, they paid for that. <laughs> that was what you paid for you. Now you have to work to keep them. Mm. So so the concept of the sale after the sale becomes more important than it's ever become. The sale after the sale is that committed to a care plan and now the education or the, uh, the process of getting customer to understand the importance of regular care, the cadence of regular care, how, important, how how bad it is when they miss an appointment, how important it is for it to bring their family in. That only starts now. It only starts the sale after sale. Once you've sold the care plan, that's the beginning of the relationship. 
the beginning of the retention relationship. Mm. So the first thing is to understand the sale after the sale becomes paramount now. The other thing it, that becomes paramount now is a, is a purposeful, planned, known by the whole team, strategy to stimulate and uh, stimulate referrals. So referrals uh, happen in many in many ways, but there's a couple of things I run through for referrals. Number one is uh, you, there's no place for any room for entitlement. If you think that someone deserves you, sh- because you gave them great results, they should send someone to you. You're in big trouble. Never gonna happen. Number two, I think that lack of referrals started a long hard look, look in the mirror. There's an excellent book called Purpose Driven Church. Okay, by Rick Warren. Now he essentially was a coach or consultant for. Uh, churches to become super churches and his book is required marketing reading for anyone who actually wants to learn the arts of marketing and um, this advice given to me by probably the most famous marketer Dan Kennedy and he's like you have to read the book read the book from cover to cover his exact instructions were read the book from cover to cover and then start again and read from cover to cover because it's the whole book is an absolute um, study on human psychology and relationships, actually, and how it all works, um, and he says that in a in a in a in in that environment, if if people aren't referring people to you, a long hard look in the mirror is required. And I think that's excellent advice. I think it's excellent advice. It does not mean that this, it does not mean that the service always is bad. It doesn't mean it does or it doesn't mean that the results are bad. But a long hard look in the mirror is required. Um, He's, he's got this, Rick Warren talks about this thing that's quantity comes from quality. Let me say that again. Quantity comes from quality. So first of all, l- banish entitlement, okay? I've got to work hard to create referrals. Mm-hmm. They don't happen automatically. Number two is quanti- uh, quality. So how do we get qu- quality? Quality starts with how they greet you on the front desk. How, how, are there welcome packs being sent out? Are there purposeful demonstration of uh, referrals and um and testimonials do we make an effort to remember names remember siblings names partners names um kids names are they getting are we sending birthday cards out etc so like quite and then the quality on the bench so i always say this the first slide of my first course i ever taught was i'm about to teach you uh, new patient avalanche by the way how to get new patients i'm about to teach you some crazy cool secret ninja skills that will change your life forever but do not mistake those skills for a, 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 a replacement of the product, which is the adjustment on the table. So, so if you if you haven't been to an adjustment course, if you haven't been to sharpen your sword or or axe, as they say, in a while, it might be a good place to start. You know, go out there because you know what happens. You know what? Nothing changes. I'm telling you now. The thing with an adjustment course or engaging or actively engaging in the process of getting better at your art on the table has got very little to do with the change that happens on the table. It's got everything to do with your confidence and people can feel it. They can feel when you set up and you have certainty in the thing you're doing. People gain certainty in many different ways, by the way, whether that's through reading research, through going through adjustment courses, etc. So that's the thing. So first of all, we've got banished entitlement. Next, we have quality to get quantity right the next is a purposeful strategy to stimulate and demonstrate and seed the fact that people refer here for example we can dramatically change referrals within a practice by doing two things one just give a ton it sounds so old school but a ton of referral vouchers okay next the process the on the sale after the sale when someone starts the process with you First telephone call, is this for you or your whole family, sir? Interesting, tiny throwaway comment. Wow, the whole family's come here. Practice tour. Some people have said they're outdated. I think they're an excellent opportunity to demonstrate. Let me take you on a quick practice tour, specifically for other services in the business, by the way. So it's like, hey, I just want to show you, this is our family board. Family board, interesting. Oh, there's a whole bunch of babies on you. Well, why would a baby get, need to get adjusted? And that is called an opportunity. That's an, that's an, it's an educational opportunity. Here's why babies get adjusted. That means immediately we've changed the perspective of the prospect or customer or patient that, hey, I could refer my niece, my nephew, my cousin who's had a baby, or recently I've had a baby. Wow, I didn't know that. That's great. 
And then a throwaway comment that happens after that, which is purposeful and planned and scripted, is, uh, yeah, actually we have a policy here that um, we believe that it's no good you being the only person in your family that's healing and unsubluxated and the rest of your family being subluxated. So we check, we have a policy here that we check all family members, immediate family members for free within the first month. So we've given them a voucher and we've given them whether it's 50% off, 75% off, but is that your best customer, guys? Like, mm. who cares if it's 75? We don't care about the upfront fee, right? So some people are like, oh, I must charge something. Fine, charge something. But if, you st if you're struggling with referrals, why would you put any other barrier when you know that the highest, the, the, when, when there's, when, if a whole family's under care, families grow practices. Fa let me say that again, families grow practices. So you can take bits and pieces from this. So the first part is, it starts on the phone already with the C's for your whole family. Then we have uh, a family board. Wow, actually family board. Then we have uh, a comments like, oh yeah, we, that's why we check whole, which we have in the first month of care, and we check the whole family for free. Oh, wow, interesting, fine. That might happen better after they've committed to care, um, but it might come up in a conversation. The next is part of a demonstration. A demonstration for referrals is essential. So they walk into the practice, think how many seeds, think how many throwaway things I've just mentioned. They walk into the practice and there is, um, there's a board that says, thank you for referring. And there's 13 names on there. Wow, people refer here. That's interesting. And then they, they on the tour, they walk down and they show in the board. These are all little things for attention as well. He has a board of a hundred club. There's everyone who's had over a hundred adjustments or our five-year club or our three-year club or whatever you want to call it. Like these are our people or our well-being members or whatever you want to call it. These are demonstration that people come here and they stay here. Wow, that's interesting. Why would someone need a hundred adjustments? Why would someone need um, um, to, to come to chiropractic care for one year? That again is an opportunity. It's an education opportunity because the objection is already there. So you better address it. Mm. So I was like, awesome, let's address that. Because we, typically what happens is, and then CA might have their script and all they might be able to go, you know, Dr. Ryan's going to go through it with you in the, in the examination. Uh, but the point is that what we specialize in, yeah, is not only helping people get out of pain, but keep them out of pain. And that like going to the gym regularly, like getting your brushing your teeth regularly or whatever it is, there is some type of maintenance required to keep anything in good in good in good order, and these particular patients value it, and they're our longest standing and our best results. So, we haven't even seen the patient yet, and we have referral seeds and we have retention seeds. Also in the in the welcome pack as well that they receive. Great point. So so we if we're sending a, a welcome point to something in the post prior to them coming in, we want to demonstrate again great results that increase retention and that increase conversions. Um, and then when we're talking about referral specifically, is there is one straight we have one we have one of our uh, uh, platinum and inner circle members, our our, our, our one of our longest standing um, clients. They have grown their practice near over seven figures in dollars. So they have grown by over seven figures in dollars. So a million dollars a year they've grown the practice by, right? And we were having an intimate mastermind the other day and they were talking about how they get between 15 and 25 referrals every week. Let me say that again, 15 to 25 referrals every week. And the rest of the group were somewhat flabbergasted by this. And they went to the strategy. Like how are you getting 15 to 20 referrals to 25? Some weeks 30 referrals every single week. And there was a purposeful plan. There were referral vouchers. There was, on the intake form, there was a tick box to go, would you like to bring your family here for a complimentary assessment? Tick box. That's a, that's an indication that the customer's open and 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 to that particular uh, sale, if you will. And then the biggest thing that came from it was the aggressive nature of acknowledgement. So... The single biggest thing you can do in your business now to stimulate referrals or anything in your business is acknowledge the behavior. So there is this beautiful chapter uh, in a book I've recently read, and it it talks about how this meant this consultant or coach talks about how many times he's had the following conversation with somebody, and it goes something like this. I referred so-and-so to whatever business, practice, person, and I never got so much as a 
thank you. I never, and, 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 the, and the story goes that when the person, typically when the person's saying it, there's a high level of emotion. They're, they pissed off when they're saying it. They're like, I've referred, I know there's a chiropractor watching this right now who's referred 10, 20 patients to a chiropractor down the road or chiropractor in a different state. And they've never got so much as a thank you. And they have said out loud, that guy never even says, he never even acknowledges me. Yes, uh, like someone's watching this right now going, that's so true. And they follow that up by going, that is the last time I send anyone to that business person, etc. Now, think about what, think about this one second. And there's another psychology, I can't remember who said it, but it was it was the concept that you must if if you're gonna do well in this changed economy, you have to understand that the psych you have to go deeper on the psychology of human behavior. And one of the psychology of human behavior is this desperate need to be seen, acknowledged. Okay? And one of them is when something like that is given, whether even if it's given, they say you should you should give and not expect to receive. Right, but the reality of that is, that's almost not possible for anyone. Almost not possible, and and by receive, very everyone appreciates being acknowledged for the kind deed, everyone. And at some point in the relation, goes, I've seen, I've done this for this guy, I've done this guy, this guy. Like I never got so much as a thank you. You better believe that that resource or that 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 channel of good grace is ending. So one of the biggest breakaways we had in that session was the aggressive nature in which they thank. There are many ways to do this. We've done this many times. But there's a universal law that says you cannot have more if you do not appreciate what is. So you, can, you will not receive more referrals if you do not send them some type of appreciation. If you are not sending your referrals, a something significant in the post, uh, you are leaving so much money on the table a, just good vibes, karma, if you believe in that type of thing, and just universal law of there's, there's, there's a, there is a law of reciprocation or when you give something, someone wants to give back. And when someone gets, like that's literally how, if you look at the process of, of if you try, if you've ever had a dog and you try to train a dog, it's little baby rewards, right? Mm. It's like the first positive time. Reinforcement. That, positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. It's like they know, if no one's doing we're all the same. We're all the same, you know. So if you're not positively enforcing the behavior, you can forget it. You and can, it's, it's, it's polite. It's, it's dude, polite. it's menace. So, so, so I can't believe how many chiropractors I start working with. They're like, the biggest takeaway is that they've never sent anything to the post to thank for a referral. And that is significant. So I've been through that whole process. There's not just one thing. But if we talk about that, here's some things we've done. Handwritten note from the doc. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. Really? Like, Really? Like to send a handwritten note to giving you tens of thousands of business exactly. and changing lives. You don't have to do that, but that's one well, that's one avenue. We used to send a card and we used to you have to check if this is okay in your state. Um, but we used to send a little lotter ticket in the card and we used to say something cheesy like uh, you know, uh, you know, thank you so much for sending Mary through. We feel like we've hit the jackpot with you. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it, how much it means to us, and how much uh, easy it makes for it makes for us to make a big impact in the community. We feel like we've hit the jackpot with you. So he has a lot of ticket. We hope you hit the jackpot, and it makes an impact, right? Mm. So, so, so in the new economy, I think getting more out of less is essential. That means. You've got to retain people more. You've got to stimulate more referrals. And if we're talking about retention, yes, being good at the craft and doing the thing will create retention. All those seeds I spoke about will create retention. But I tell you, when it comes to retention, there are many, there, there's an, I'm actually writing an entire book on this right now, on the psychology of this. But there's been so much research done around so many different things. We spoke about post. It's not only post, for referrals, but there's regular receiving something regular in the post for retention has been statistically proven to increase retention of any customer in any business. You could send brownies in the post and they would do it. Anything, it's irrelevant, 
But the endorphin rush that a customer gets from getting something in the post is arguably more important now than it's ever been. Why? Because of social media, mm. because of emails, because it's more expensive, because less people are showing up in the post than ever before, and that is exciting for you as the business owner. Because you're not competing with 57 different pieces of post. Mm. Because people are saying things by email, social media. You're competing with three other people who've actually got wits about them. And typically, or almost never a chiropractor. So if you want to stand out, send all your patients a newsletter. We do a print newsletter for our, for our consulting clients for that exact reason. Because it's so easy to stand out by sending something print on a monthly basis to either your high-value customers or your membership clients. It's an easy thing to do. Sending birthday cards to every single customer is a simple, easy thing to do. And some of my business owners have even started to send half birthday cards. Sounds ridiculous, right? It's an excuse to send something. It's like, imagine you, when's the last time you sent a birthday card? But a half birthday card, hey, six months to your birthday to go. I promise you, you'll be, you'll be in the front of their mind. We could do a birthday card and a, and a clinic anniversary once they've been with you for a year. Deck. Oh, excellent, mm -hmm. excellent, all right? Um, regular emails, I, I don't know why anyone would not be sending their list at least one to two emails every single week. We do it for our consulting clients. We write a topical email every single week. We send it to them. They can edit and change it and they send it and they forward it because there's this like, you just want to be in there. You want to show up in multiple places in their life. It's called environment penetration. You want to invite, you want to penetrate the environment. You want to, you want to own up, you want to, you want to be the newsletter on their fridge. You want to be the newsletter lying on the kitchen table. You want to be, the emails every week coming through their inbox. They're not going to open, they're going to open, they open one in 50, but they see them coming in. Mm. You want to be the person showing up on their news, uh, on their Facebook feeds. It's not one, it's all of those things. So referrals, retention, deep subjects, they require deep thought and deep um, uh, planning. It, if, if, if the entitlement, the, the key to this is attitudes more important than anything else, the attitude around referrals and the attitude around retention, if any entitlement comes into play, in either of those two things, you're in big, big trouble. Oh, we don't have to send print newsletters because we're really good at what we do. You're in trouble. We don't have to send the uh, birthday cards because we've got this far without them. You're in trouble. Any level of that, you're not going to grow the way you want to grow. You're not going to make the impact you want to go. So those are those are my advice in the new economy. How would you grow? Let's look at let's look at changing our psychology around it. Let's look at making sure that we're aware as a team that it's that it's a uh, it's an issue, but we maintain our own personal finance and we go deep on referrals. We go deep on retention and we give it some thought. We train on it. We role play on it. We think about it and we do the things that most businesses are not prepared to do, like send the newsletters, postcards, welcome packs. Thank you for referral boards, family boards, and I've mentioned loads of things just in this, what, 20-minute talk of things that would change your business. I'm talking six figures growth, so I hope that answers your question.